I'm Jennifer Ackerman Haywood from CraftSanity.com and I just wanted to show you guys some new embroidery samples that I've been printing on my etching press. So they look like this before you do any stitching. So these are the three that I've been printing and I just started offering these in my Etsy shop. This is what it looks like after you get to do the fun part, which is the stitching. I like the printing too, but I, I do that for you so you guys can just get stitching. And you can do these a bunch of different ways. I have another one here that I printed where I printed all of them on one. As you can see, this is the same, this circle is the same as this one. This is just really basic. I just outlined it. This one I did a little more and you can see there's some French knot action going on in there in the center. You can do whatever you want. Uh, on this one, I actually stitched the in-between spaces here. Uh, but this one, I was like, no, nope, I'm done <laughs> after not going as far. So these are really fun to do, and I'm excited to introduce these. Now, I know a lot of you out there in the craft sanity world, a lot of you probably already know how to do a little bit of embroidery, and that's fine. You can go do something else instead of watching the rest of this video, if that's the case. But since I am putting these samplers out, I wanted to make sure that I start with some basic information, just kind of put some basics out there, just in case you guys need to need a little refresher. So this is an embroidery hoop, and I sell these with the samplers, or you can just buy the samplers by themselves. This is a six inch wooden embroidery hoop. You can also use plastic. The wooden ones are the lightest to mail, so I'm, I've been using those. And as I just skipped ahead here, what I did is I just, I just loosened this metal piece at the top. So I'm going to put the piece with the wood, that's just a wooden circle with no metal fastener on it underneath. And these designs fit just inside. And then what you do is you come here and push it right over and then tighten it up at the top. Now it is possible to embroider without having a hoop. However, this holds your fabric nice and taut so you can stitch and it will be less wrinkly and so forth. But you definitely can do embroidery without a hoop if that's how you're most comfortable. Okay, so now that we have our work, our sampler ready to go, I'm gonna show you guys how to prep a needle and prep your embroidery floss. Now this is gonna be your dose of reality here, folks. This is my, it's well, it's a Vera Bradley makeup case. Um, but as you can see, I don't wear, I, I have more art supplies and craft supplies than makeup, and that's fine with me. I am not wearing any makeup right now. And my makeup bag is filled with embroidery floss. So, and it's messy. I, I think a lot of times people feel a lot of pressure to have a immaculate and perfect embroidery case. Eh, you don't really need that. I mean, that's cool if you have a lot of time to or organize your embroidery floss. Uh, I'm not living that kind of lifestyle right now. So, <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get ready to stitch. And normally I use an arm's length of embroidery floss and then I double it. Now this is shorter, it's just a piece I had sitting here. The way I thread a needle is I just push those threads together and pull them through gently. Now, if it doesn't thread that easily for you the first time, don't worry because um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get the hang of it, especially if you've been done this before. Now, what I do though, when I'm using longer amounts, because I don't like to reload my needle very often, and I also don't like to pull through, when I have it just folded over like this and I'm stitching, I often pull my needle right off, and that is very annoying to me. So I'm gonna divide this into two sections of, it's two groups of three, and then I'm gonna double that and I'll show you how to do this. 
I'm going to use some Velcro here to help me with my help me divide this. Now keep in mind that I often do not use Velcro. I usually just hold the thread in my teeth and pull with both my hands to separate it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have the Velcro just push my my thread into the Velcro like this and then I'm going to just pull one group of three while I hold my finger down like this. And I'm going to try to straighten out my thread. And I find that this is something that when it works, it works really well. When it doesn't work, it's really annoying. So this might be not the, the approach for everyone, but it's kind of cool. So now this looks like a big mess, but look at that. So what, what I'm going to do, I'm not using this right now, so I'm just going to wrap this around. So, okay, that's going to go off to the side here. And now I'm left with a strand of, so I have a strand of three. And what I'm going to do is just push that through like so. Pull it all the way through. And I'm just going to knot it right here. Like so. And then that means if I pull my needle all the way through, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to come off, which I like. Okay, so jumping over to the sampler. Uh, there's no real rule here to this. You can just get started, just jump in. Uh, when I teach workshops, I will have people start in a really, like with something really easy. And most of this is, I mean, this is all very easy. You just are gonna trace the lines. So here I have a little section that is basically running stitch. So you just trace, and you can do this a couple ways. You can go down and then come back up and then go back down. Or if you want, you can come up and then put your needle down and then push it up and down through that fabric and pull it through a bunch of stitches at once. It's really up to you. And so it looks like this and you pull it through and it looks similar on the back. Okay. So that's how the running stitch goes. And now I'm going to show you a little back stitch. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start over. I'm going to just trace this line right here. And so I'm going to start underneath. I like to keep all my knots in the back. However, some people will put the knot on the top for kind of a decorative element, and that's fine too. I like to keep it in the back. Um, okay, so for back stitch, you're gonna go same as running stitch. And I'm gonna do a couple different methods of this. And then you're, now notice if I, I can't come up through the same spot right here, cause then I pull out that first stitch. So you have to go about the same distance as your first stitch, that space away from where you just went down below the fabric. And you're gonna go back to that last stitch. So I'll do that again. So you're gonna, and it's a little awkward for me to be stitching with my face out of the way of the camera. So bear with me, folks. These samplers really aren't as hard as I'm making it look right now. Okay, so again, I'm gonna go, and I feel like, oh, look, and I have a little wad of floss here behind. Now it's better to take care of this It's better to take care of this, and this will give me an opportunity to show you. You can undo these things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pull that last stitch up. I didn't do this on purpose, folks, but I'm kind of glad it happened because I'm just picking up all kinds of thread. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna pull this back through. And we got some yellow, just jump on board here. I'm just gonna pull it back through and then I'm gonna just hold my needle straight 
and pull and it will come right through. And then I'm going to pull that thread through because I had a jumble on the back and then I stitched through it and that made it a little bit of a hairy situation here. But if you just take a breath and backtrack, you can usually fix most of the problems in your embroidery. And it is a good idea to look at the back of your work every so often. Now it doesn't have to be like super perfect, but obviously having a big tangle like this, not a great idea. Because it just makes everything, uh, you, you just want, you want it to be flat and, and you want your stitches to lay properly because if it's all like loosey goosey on the back like this, it's uh now when you're pulling this through you gotta make sure that you're actually okay so again I'm just pulling this end and trying to pull gently through so it I can backtrack. So I did this is a pretty impressive uh knot situation here. And again I didn't do it on purpose but was a little teachable moment for us, for sure. Okay, we are going to resume. Martha Stewart would, would not want me to do videos for her, my word. Okay, so we're gonna go up. And we now have to go a little space away. Go back down. And then we backtrack so you go out And now you can go back down, just like so. And because we went from here to there, we now can come up in this spot right here. Now here's a different, faster way to do it. This it takes a little bit more thread to do it this way, but it's faster. So what you can do is go a little bit away like that, and then come back. And just keep doing the same pattern, just like this every time, so you're not even concerning yourself with how, like, with the up and down you're doing. Now you can come up like this below and kind of do two, skip two steps. But again, that throws you off. So, so I recommend that you just kind of get into a rhythm of going. So you go down next to the stitch and then skip a little space. Now, do these stitches have to all be the same exact length? No, they don't have to be. I mean, if you're looking for a really smooth and perfect stitch length, I mean, yeah, you could totally do that, but I don't stress myself out over that. So again, as you can see, this is faster than doing the put it through, put it down, put it up. You're just kind of always working from You're always working your needle from the top and coming back. Just going underneath there, like so, okay? And so the back, where this is what it looks like when you go up and then down, and this is when you're doing that back stitch and just doing it all in one, kind of like both of these motions at once. And that does eat up a little extra thread, but it does give you a kind of a cool line on the back. So, okay, so we're gonna, put this off to the side. And normally I do not stop and switch colors, like switch sections because things can get tangled. But I'm doing that today just because I am doing some demo here. Now I'm gonna show how to make French knots. And you know, a lot of people get nervous about doing French knots, but they're actually pretty easy. 
And there are a lot of embroidery artists out there who do have immaculate approaches to this. I am gonna just show you how I do this and then you feel free to research how you wanna do it. So on the sampler, I have some dots here. Now you do not have to make French knots there. You can do whatever you want, but uh, when I carved it out, I had the intention of having a French knot there. So I'm gonna come up from the bottom and I'm going to take my needle and have my thread in the other hand and I'm going to wrap that thread around my needle. And I'm gonna wrap three times to give me a decent size knot there. And what I do is I hold on to, you can see it's wrapped around the needle. I'm gonna hold on to that thread and have a little bit of tension on it because you don't want this to be loose. You want to rest that knot to rest right on the top of your fabric. I'm just gonna pull through gently and we're left with a little knot. Try that once more. I'm gonna go out to the next spot where I want to have a knot. And I'm gonna put my work down, wrap around three times. And I'm not going down through the same exact opening in the fabric, I'm going right next to it. And again, I'm kind of using my thumb to hold that in place. And sorry, I keep moving. I'm trying to get used to this new camera rig system here. Okay, let me pull it through. So I keep moving my work around kind of haphazardly. But thank you for bearing with me. Okay, we're gonna do one more. That's kind of more like four. I'm kind of doing four wraps instead of three. I'm saying three and then I'm going ahead and doing four. All right. There we go. As you can see on the back, you can just see where my thread has gone from one knot to the other. And then uh, anytime I'm finishing off my work, what I do, I'm technically not done with my work here, but I'll show you. I come back through the previous stitch or just the, wherever I can find a, a bar going across of the thread and I just kind of make a loop and go through it. And I do that a couple times just to anchor things down. And then I'll just cut close to it. Now this I'm not gonna cut because I am going to continue to stitch with this. Now I wanna, I'm gonna come up right here so I don't leave my needle on the back because I find that if it's on the front, I'm less likely to poke myself. I'm gonna move over to this sample. I did French knots that were spaced away from each other. If you do a grouping of them, you can create some nice texture and that's kind of fun to do too. But if you look at this sample, this is all very basic. I just traced with a back stitch and then I just went across in between the circles and just made lines. Very, very simple but it was very, very fun to do. So the intention here is I'm just trying to give people some, kind of like, it's almost like coloring in a coloring book, only you're, you're doing it with stitches and thread and it can be really fun. So those are the basics. I don't really have any other, oh, you know what? There's one other technique that I will show you. Um, the couching technique, which is right here. And this one's really fun. And actually it's on, well, I do have a sample here that I can do. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over. I'm gonna just use some of the thread that I'm already using here. And I'm just gonna come up over here. Now, ideally, I wouldn't skip sections like this because I normally like to finish. I like to finish the section I'm in. Okay, so when I did this, with whatever color you want to go straight across, you just come up on one end and then go down on the other end. And I'm just gonna leave that there. I'm gonna come up through the bottom and you can do two different things. So you can go right next to it and go really tightly and make a really small stitch like that, that you, it's kind of hard to see that. Or you can make a, a longer stitch and that's holding that 
in place. Just go all the way across. And then when you're done, you knot off both the pink and the purple. And pretty much everything else on here, you're just tracing the lines. So for these stars, I just make an X and then go across. Uh, you can do a little more couching over here. I'll show you on this one. So you have your couching here. Um, I did the same thing over here. I just stitched across that whole length and then came back in with the contrasting color. And yeah, I mean, everything else is pretty much just tracing the lines. And again, I had a workshop where one lady decided to just do freestyle embroidery all over the whole thing, and that's that's totally fine. So hopefully this was inspirational and kind of get you started. And again, don't worry about how the back looks. You do want to avoid those big messes of just a wad of embroidery floss that just make, make it awkward for you to stitch. But um, if you do get one, it looks like I have, yeah, I had one here that I didn't notice right away and I just kept going. And then it's fine. It's totally fine. Now, if this is something that you're going to wear, uh, if you're going to do some embroidery on clothing, you might want to... Um, you know, be extra careful with that, especially if it's going to go through the wash. Um, so, you know, making sure that you just want to make sure that your stitching is going to stay in place. So you don't want to have it be a big wad that could come loose and then loosen the stitching on the front. So, so yes, I hope this inspires you. If you're looking to get your hands on any of these samplers to start stitching yourself, head over to craftsanity.com uh, or craftsanity.etsy.com and you can see the sample projects and all the samplers that you can purchase. Happy stitching, friends. Same time next week will be